The gun attack on a kosher supermarket in Paris has put the spotlight on relations between Europe's Jewish and Muslim communities. Some people fear similar attacks could happen here, so community leaders from both faiths are urging people to work together. Breakfast Graham Satchel has been to an Islamic girls' school which is sharing lessons with Jewish students to promote understanding between the faiths. My name's Ifa, I'm 14 and I'm a Muslim. We are just scared to think what they think of us. My name's Hallie, I'm 13 and I'm Jewish. Do you have any Muslim friends? No. I know that all, no, not all Muslim people are bad, so... They're not all bad? No. Do you have any Jewish friends? No. I've never really met someone who's Jewish, so I don't really have an opinion on them. Good morning to everyone. It's fantastic that we're all here together, especially in the current climate where there are difficulties between communities in the world. A group of Jewish teenage girls at an Islamic school. You just want to jot down on the paper some of the stereotypes and discuss them. They've come together after the attacks in Paris and increased security in some Jewish areas here. What do you think of this person? So we thought that he was probably relig religious because of his beard. It doesn't mean like just busting myths, smashing stereotypes, learning about each other's culture and religion. We believe that there's only one God. We believe that he, cre he created everything and he's not physical. Muslims believe that there is only one God and he is eternal, which is very similar to you guys. It's easy to be cynical about all this. Teenage girls getting together in Manchester will hardly stop decades of hatred, extremism and conflict between Muslims and Jews. But... I think it has to start with the kids. The growing up world is prejudiced and perhaps have lost their ability to dream. And I'm a school teacher, so I dream and I, I see dreams and children's dreams as something that's very, very real. If, if an understanding of one person has changed, then you've kind of changed the world in, at some point. And hopefully that person will change someone else's understanding. So what did the girls make of it? It's just been a great experience to experience an, another religion's lifestyle and to see that we've both got so much in common. All the stereotypes are just really stupid. We actually like have like practically the same religion apart from a few things. So new friendships, new understanding. In a world where all too often in recent years there has been precious little of either. Graham Satchel, BBC News, Manchester. Well, joining us now are senior rabbi Laura Jana Klausner to reform Judaism and Julie Siddiqui, who's a consultant on interfaith relations. Uh, you're both very welcome here this morning. A lot of people, and I just wonder about your reflections first, watching that film, will be thinking sometimes out of the mouths of young children, and I don't mean that in a patronising way at all, uh, great wisdom comes. And, and there is a sense there that they're saying things that a lot of people think. Uh, in their, how they deal with one another when they actually meet. Can I just get your thoughts on that first? Well, first of all, I think it's true about young people. They say the truth. And I think in interfaith, any interfaith, that's what we need to do. And I think when they say their truths, we really need to listen to them. Yeah, and I, I mean, I think it's brilliant. I think what we just saw there and other work that's happening, particularly with young people or even older people, it's, it's, it's what needs to happen, you know. And once people get together, you know, they will have definitely, the girls, they would have definitely got a sense that actually there's more in common than we ever realised. Um, and, you know, that there's more similarities and differences. And, you know, these things are really, really important. And it can break down things very quickly once you get to know people. And those friendships are, are crucial, I think. When we introduced that piece by Graham Satchel at the school, we... Um started by talking about the Charlie Hebdo attacks, the mm -hmm. gun attacks in Paris, and the idea that those attacks have highlighted and perhaps almost inflamed tension between the Jewish and the Muslim communities. And I know you both have worked together for quite a few years mm -hmm. now on interfaith relations. Do you think that's true? Have tensions heightened since the attacks? Yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, obviously it's, it was, it was it's heartbreaking. It was very difficult to watch and to see it unfold. And then, of course, the, on the Friday when the kosher supermarket was attacked as well, 
my heart sank even further. Um, and but you know, very quickly, the, the messages, the phone calls between people like us and other friends um, were what really lifted me and really kept me going. And if, so, if, but of course, it is difficult, and these things will make an impact. Um, I think what's important is that we don't allow that to divide us further, because actually, that's what the kind of people that do these things—that's exactly what they want to so happen. So, if you had to work more together, do you think will the, are the communities having to make it more effort to work together? I think we will need to work together more, and I think. I think we need to shift our focus. We've done a lot of good work on getting to know each other and making friendships, but actually now we need to talk about the hard things that are divisive, whether it's Israel-Palestine, talking about that both peoples have dignity and justice and safety and security, or whether it's talking about religious extremism and violence. We need to talk about these things so that when something else, God forbid, happens again or there's war again, it's much more robust. It wasn't just now, it was also the summer also impacted on our relations very detrimentally. And then you have to hold on and you say, OK, breathe. Now we're going to talk about those difficult things. Uh, can I ask you, we were in, mentioned right at the beginning how these young people are able to see the similarities mm -hmm. and that, that is the thing that matters most, what they have in common. Where, why, why and where do you think it is that that changes? Because I don't know, probably 20 years ago, if we'd brought children together, they might have, we might have seen the same again. And then as, as they get older, possibly they're pulled apart further. Is it the generations above them that are doing that to them? How does that, where does that change happen? Yeah, I mean, I think things are different now. So people are much more open. If you look at this country, the, you know, the, the kind of thing that we just saw there needs to happen more and more. And then, you know, you know that by teaching those young people to be open-minded, to understand that by understanding other people's faith it doesn't diminish their understanding of their own and actually if anything I would say it, it, it strengthens that. Um, those young people are in a very good place, in a place that really for people even 20 years ago weren't in I think, it was much more polarised. Um, so we have a very good opportunity. It does mean that we have a whole layer of, if you like, adults that still need to yeah. be brought together and Laura, to question, you know. But I think young people are definitely the way forward. The outside influences you can't control, though, can you? That's one of the, that's one of the very difficult things to, to get a handle on. That's right. So you need to, in a way, press the fast forward button, the what if button, and think, OK, so what if this happens? Let's say we have a summer again when we had Hamas and Israel, which was terrible for a lot of terrible. What happens again? What happens again if we have a God forbid here? The terrorist alert has gone up. So you do need to think it forward. And for children in faith schools, you have to have a sort of complementary curriculum in addition to their own, where they go out of their zone into another zone. I apologise, our time is up this morning, but thank you both very thank much for your time you. this morning.